Welcome to Electron Line. So now let's do an example where we have a single current source in the circuit. Now looking at this circuit right here, you may say, well, wait a minute. There's more than a single current source. There's a voltage source. But when you look at the equation related to the voltage source, you can see that there's voltage prior to closing the switch. Once the switch is closed, the voltage source cuts off. So what that does is it gives you some initial voltage across the circuit and as soon as the switch closes, the current is no longer, uh, uh, no longer forced to just go through the inductor, but can also flow to the rest of the circuit. So you see there's some initial conditions we have to deal with. Ultimately, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the current as a function of time in the circuit, and we're trying to find the current to the resistor as a function of time. Uh, in that particular circuit. Now, which resistor are we talking about? Well, I believe we should talk about this resistor right here. Oh, uh, no, no, I'll take that back. It's right here, this resistor, I sub R. Okay, so got that straight. And of course, the current is through the inductor right here. So let's take a look at this circuit. Before the switch closes, we have a voltage applied to this part of the circuit, but that voltage is not applied to this part of the circuit. And we have current flow to this part of the circuit, but not through that part of the circuit. But they're, they're really separated from one another. Now you can imagine that there's a current flow, there's a steady state situation before time equals zero, so there's no voltage drop across the inductor. We simply have four amps of current flowing through the inductor through that until the switch closes. Over here we have 30 volts across from here to here, essentially from here to here. And so you can see that the voltage then drops across this resistor, then goes, then is across these two branches so that the voltage across the capacitor is the same as the voltage across this resistor, but not across that resistor. Now, even though we're looking for the current, we know that we have to solve for all these other things. We have to solve for the initial voltage, the initial current, the steady state current, alpha, omega sub naught, which is the natural frequency of the circuit. And of course, we need to know what these are equal to. Hmm, I got it there twice. I don't need to have it there twice. So let me go ahead and get rid of it over here. Okay. Then also, of course, we probably need these two equations right here. At least one of them, maybe both of them. So we keep those equations handy. So let's first find the initial voltage, and that would be initial voltage across a capacitor. So we need the voltage divider. So V initial is going to be equal to the 30 volts multiplied times, well, here we have this resistor right here, divided by the total resistance, which is 20 plus 20, essentially half times 30 or 15. So 15 volts is the initial voltage across the capacitor. How about the initial current? I initial is equal to, well, that would be the current through the inductor. And of course, we already knew that that was separate from the rest of the circuit. We have four amps of current going through the inductor. And what about the steady state current? Well, let's see here. Once the switch closes, now we have current flowing through these three branches right here. Um, four branches. We have current going through here, 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 and here. We have four branches. Of course, remember that when we have two resistors in parallel, those combined will act like a single 10 ohm resistor. So we can say that our total, um, our total is equal to the product over the sum, which is equal to 20 times 20 divided by 20 plus 20. So we know that our total is equal to, let's see, that's 400, that's uh, 10 ohms. So the equivalent resistor of these two resistors in parallel is the same as a single resistor of 10 ohms, so we can just take it like that. Okay, what else? Okay, the steady state uh, current. So what we need to do here is that once this is no longer active, we have current flowing through here, through here, and through here. Now notice that this will fill up with charge and current will stop flowing through here, and then eventually all the current will go through the inductor because the inductor will not offer any resistance or opposition to the current flow and the resistors will so eventually all the current will go through the inductor so the final steady state current will also be 4 amps. Okay, now that we have that we now should find out what alpha is equal to. Now alpha is equal to 1 over 2RC that is in the case of the par parallel RCL circuit. So in this case, that's equal to 1 over 2 times 
the total resistance of the circuit, which is 10, and the capacitance is 8 millifarads. That would be 0 0.008. And let's see what that's equal to. So we have a 0 0.008 times 20, take the inverse of that, and we get 6.25. Okay, 6.25. What about the natural frequency of the circuit, which is 1 over the square root of LC, which is 1 over the square root of L. L in this case is 20 Henrys. That's a hefty inductor. And 0 0.008 for the capacitor. So let's see what that is equal to. So we have 0 0.008 times 20, take the square root of that, then find the inverse, and we get 2.5. So in this case, we see that the alpha is larger than the omega, and so we have alpha is larger than the omega, which then implies we have an overdamped case. So, once we realize we have an overdamped case, we now can write the general equation down. We can say that the current as a function of time is equal to A1 times, let's see, overdamped, that would be A1 times e to the S1t plus A2 e to the S2t plus the steady state current. And so that's the general equation. Then all we have to do here is find out what S1 and S2 are equal to, and then A1 and a2. So S1 and S2, how do we find that? Well S1 is equal to minus alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared minus omega sub naught squared and well that was S1 and S2 so 1 is plus and 1 is minus. Alright so let's do the plus case for S1 so S1 is equal to minus alpha which is 6.25 plus the square root of 6.25 squared minus omega which is 2.5 squared so let's see what s1 is equal to so 6.25 squared minus 2.5 squared equals take the square root of that and then add that to the negative 6.25 so minus 6.25 equals and we have minus 0 0.522 minus 0 0.522 and now to find S2 that's of course the negative of that and let's see here so it would be 6.25 squared minus minus 2.5 squared equals take the square root that and subtract that so it would be plus 6.25 equals, so it would be minus 11.978. So minus 11.978 for S1 and S2. So now we can plug that into our general equation. And we can now say that I of t is equal to A1. E to the S1 would be minus 0.522t plus A2 times E to the minus 11.978 plus 4 amps for this steady state current. So now we're just down to finding A1 and A2. Of course to do that we're first going to find one of them by saying that I when t is equal to 0 is equal to the initial current which we found to be right here 4 and so that is equal to A1 plus A2 because when t is equal to 0, e to the exponent becomes just 1. And then we have plus 4 right here. Okay, now we subtract 4 from both sides. So that implies that 0 is equal to a1 plus a2, which implies that a1 is equal to the negative of a2. So now we have a relationship between, between a1 and a2. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative of i, di dt, and that's the derivative of this equation right here, so that's a minus 0 0.522 times a1 times e to the minus 0 0.522t and minus 11.978a2 times e to the minus 11.978t. Of course, the derivative of constant drops off. And now we're going to use this 
in order to solve for this here. So we can say that di dt, when time is equal to zero, is equal to 0 0.75. And then also, of course, realizing that a1 equals the negative of a2. So I could replace, let's say, a1 by the negative a2. So 0 0.75 times uh, equals to uh, minus 0 0.522 multiplied times a negative a2 and uh, this goes to 1 minus 11.978 a2 and so now I can find the value for a2 and then I realize that a1 will be the negative of that so from this I can say that a2 is equal to 0 0.75 divided by well this this times this gives me a positive that's a negative so divided by 11978 plus oh that should be a minus right so 11.978 make that a minus add to that the 0.522 and so that means that a2 is equal to this divided by and a negative 11.456, which is equal to, and there we got a negative 0 0.06547. We'll just keep four decimal places there. All right. So that means, of course, that A1 is equal to the negative of that, which is a positive 0 0.06547. So now we have the values for a1 and a2. We can plug that back into our equation right here. That's the equation we want to plug it into. So finally, we have i as a function of time is equal to a1, which is a positive 0 0.06547. 4, 7, I uh, will just write 6, 5, 5. Okay, we'll keep three decimal places. Times e to the minus, e to the minus 0.522t, 0.522t, and then we have minus 0.0655e to the minus 11.978, right? 11, yeah, 11.978 times t, and then we have the steady state current plus 4. So here, we now have the equation that gives us the current as a function of time. Now we still need to find the current through the resistor. It's this resistor right here. How do we find that? Well, let's see here. I through R. So now we have to have a relationship that, um, that current through the resistor. So we have I is equal to V over R. Okay, so V is equal to L times di dt. So that means that the current through the resistor is equal to 1 over the resistance times L di dt. L times di dt. Now notice we have a di dt because we have the derivative of the function right here. And we have L over R. So that means that I to the resistor is equal to L divided by R. Now L is going to be 20, and R is going to be 20, so essentially that's equal to 1, times di dt. And so we have di dt here, and of course we have to multiply this times a1, and we know what a1 is equal to. So that gives us 0.522 times 0.06547 equals, so that gives us uh, 0. Point, and is it negative or positive? Well, this is negative, and A1 is positive, so it's a negative. So I need a negative in there. Negative 0 0.03418 times E to the minus 0.522T. That's the first part. Now, for the second part, we have this times A2. Now, A2 is the negative times the negative. That becomes a positive, so we have plus... We have 11.978 times 0.06547 equals, and so here we have plus 
0 0.784 times e to the minus 11.978t. And do we have an initial current through the resistor? The answer is no. All the current is through here, zero current through here, so there's no constant term. And this is equal to 1. So we essentially can say that this is our equation for the current through the resistor as a function of time. You can see that there's no constant term, that these negative exponents means that eventually there's no current going to the resistor. This means that this is a transient state of the current through the inductor. Eventually, the final current will be 4, and this will give us a transient state through the inductor. And that is how it's done. Let's see if it's right. Now, let's see here. I need my glasses so I can see what I'm writing. Where did my glasses go? There we go. So, did we get it right? 0 0.0655 minus. That's correct. And for the current to the resistor, 0.784, yep, and minus, yep, looks like it's right. Okay, we're good.